one of the permeable hardscape surfaces Professor Holmes mentioned was pervious concrete. And joining me now to look at how we mix this is Dr. Jason Vogel. Welcome back to the show, Jason. Thanks for having me back. Well, first, before we get started, what is the difference between a pervious concrete and a normal concrete? So pervious concrete is really similar to um, regular concrete, except it has very little or no fines and it doesn't have any sand in it. So you just mm -hmm. mix it up with aggregate, um, Portland cement, and water, and that's all that's in it. And by removing that sand, we have larger pore spaces? Yep, so you're going to get interconnected pores, and that allows the water to infiltrate through the concrete down into the soil underneath the concrete. Okay, and in the landscape, um, what are some of the considerations that we might put into using this? So, uh, pervious concrete is pretty specialized in that you don't want to put it in an area where there's a lot of silt coming onto the pervious concrete mm -hmm. because that silt and clay will clog the concrete and just render it unusable. It's just like regular concrete then because water won't fall, flow through it. The pore spaces will get all filled up. Exactly. And what kind of weight can the concrete hold? So pervious concrete, because you don't have fines, you have air voids, it's going to be um, uh, weaker structurally than regular concrete. So mm -hmm. you're going to put it on areas that have less traffic, um, things like parking lots, driveways, patios, sidewalks, um, cart paths, things like that. So pretty much all of our landscape uses, it's when we get to a commercial setting, um, our highways aren't going to have this. E but. Exactly. Okay. Well, very good. Um, with our paver system, we looked at some special maintenance. Do we also have those concerns with our so concrete? You're going to have similar um, mm -hmm. maintenance concerns with pervious concrete, and you're going to come want to come around probably at least once a year and either vacuum up the fines or maybe blow them out with, with an air blower. Okay, very similar. Well, let's get started. Um, what are the materials we're going to use here? So, as I mentioned before, we have three different materials. We have aggregate. In this case, it's crushed limestone, mm -hmm. and you generally want to use an aggregate that's approximately the same size, or you can mix and match some things to try to get a different look on, on your pervious concrete. This right here is um, crushed limestone that's about a quarter of an inch. Okay. Um, you can also use river rock um, from a quarter inch up to three quarters of an inch or so. We'll look at some of those examples later. Yep. Okay. Uh, we also have a little bit of uh, Portland cement right here, and then a little bit of water, and we've pre-measured all of these um, for our demonstration. So you're um, going to need a scale uh, to measure things out because the exact amounts are pretty important. Here. Exactly. So mm -hmm. there's really ratios that, that you give to try to figure out how much of each of the materials you want to add. Mm -hmm. And um, on the aggregate to cement ratio, it can range from about 4 to 1 to about 7.5 to 1 by weight. We're going to do a demonstration here that's 7 to 1 by weight, so that's a little bit on the higher end. So 7 aggregate to 1 7 cement. pounds of aggregate to 1 pound of cement. Okay. And then to measure the amount of water that we're adding, we're going to have approximately 0.32 um, pounds of water per pound of cement. It's really important to get that amount of water correct, but it's a little bit of an art form as well, so you really want to work with it, know, know what you're doing, or have your contractor who's installing it know what they're doing when they're mixing all these things together. The ratio on that can go from about 0.27 to 0.34, but the Indiana Ready Mix Concrete Association has recommended 0.32, and that's usually what I do on the applications when I'm putting it in. Okay, well let's uh, mix our batch up. We're going to do a little demonstration. Um, you want to wear some safety glasses to protect your eyes when you're working, and some good work gloves. Okay. So we're going to start off with here and um, slowly pour in the cement. It's very fine material, so it'll blow up in the air. So we want to mix that and uh, just stir it a little bit there, Kim, and, and mix that in a little bit and we'll get that in there. Then we're going to add part of our water and it's real important to, to keep this as, as uniform as we can so we're going to add some of our water and she'll mix that up a little bit. Okay. And in order to thoroughly mix it we have another bucket yep. here as well. So, so we'll add the rest of the water in here, just keep going. And it is a surprisingly small amount of water uh, from when you're making you know, other types of concrete. Yeah, and it's a very fine line between not having enough and having too much. 
So we're gonna go in here to keep, keep mixing this up. And so the mixing process is pouring it back and forth yep. between the two buckets until that water and concrete is evenly distributed. Yep, and we'll continue to, to stir this. Mm -hmm. So we mix this back and forth, slowly adding our water so we get the right amount of water cement mixture. We're looking for it to make a, a cement sheen on top of the on top of our aggregate. Let's mix this back and forth here a couple times. Looks like we're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to lay it out in a demonstration block uh, here. But if we were working in the landscape, you would build a wood, wood frame just as if you were laying a regular concrete sidewalk. Exactly. Okay. So for demonstration purposes here, we have a little bit of sand in the bottom of our frame. In the field, you're going to have your gravel sub-base just like mm -hmm. the previous pavers. So that isn't necessary, but it's real important that you don't have a smooth surface on the top or the bottom because that's going to cut off your pores in the water. It's just going to make it pretty much solid so the water won't move yeah. through. Now the mixing process is pretty delicate, so it might be a good idea for someone to practice this on a small scale like we're doing here. Exactly. If you don't have a certified contractor or somebody who really knows what they're doing putting this together, you're going to have to practice a couple times because it's a, uh, an art form, really. Okay. So we'll grab one of our pipes and kind of smooth this off, and we can add a little bit more in here. When we first start to smooth this off, uh, we're going to want to add about a half inch more than, than what the level surface of our finished product is going to be. And in the field, you would do this by adding about a half inch shape to your form okay. and then smoothing that off at that, at that layer. Here, we're, since we have just a small area, we're just going to go ahead and smooth it off with that. We got a little bit extra and then we'll compact it down really good. And even though we're compacting it, we're not filling all those pore spaces. No, what you're doing is since this is crushed limestone, it has a lot of smooth surfaces and they're just um, pushing up against each other. Mm -hmm. This is increasing our strength of our finished product, but you're not going to decrease your permeability or your, your infiltration rate at all. Very good. Once again, I'll stress it's important that you don't finish this off with a trowel or anything like that. You want to have this rough surface on at the top because that allows all the pores to be open so that you can infiltrate water through the cement. Okay, now we need to let this cure. So this is going to sit out in the field for about a week mm -hmm. and um, in the, when you're putting this in, onto a larger application you're going to want to fog it a little bit first. So we have a spray bottle here. Mm -hmm. um, as it's being laid in the field it's a lot bigger application. It'll take a little bit longer time. The surface might start to dry out so you're going to fog it or okay. get some kind of a mist on the surface to make sure that the surface is still wet. And then you're going to want to cover it with a plastic cover. Here in our case, we're covering it with saran wrap. And you're going to leave that on there for a week. And this will hold the moisture in. It'll allow it to cure properly so that we get our proper strength on our concrete. Okay. Well, we have some finished samples um, with different size aggregate. Why don't we go take a look at those? All right. <laughs> These are some of your finished products with different size aggregates. Yeah, so these are some examples that we made up at a workshop that we did this spring. Um, you can see that you can get a really different look if you use different size of rocks, and you can use combinations of rocks. Here we have some, some uh, pond, pond rocks along with some pea gravel, and you make a, a varied textured look. Here we have river rock. Here we have an example, an, an, another example of river rock that's slightly smaller. Here is some of our pea gravel. Um, as you can see in this one, we dyed this one green. Mm -hmm. um, here we have crushed limestone along with river rock, and that gives you a, a different texture again. And then finally, we have the example of our crushed limestone that is, that is the same thing that we worked up today. 
Okay, well, let's look at the water moving through here. So this right here, because it's smaller, it probably has less infiltration as, than some of the other ones that we looked at here just now, but it still will probably take about a foot of rain an hour going through this concrete. That's really impressive. You can see how it just moves straight through. Um, certainly going to be a benefit in the landscape. Where can people go if they want to learn more about uh, pervious concrete? You can go to OSU's Low Impact Development website, lid.okstate.edu. And you also have some information on the permeable pavers that we talked about earlier. As yes, well. it's, it's all on there along with other low impact development stormwater management practices. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thanks for inviting me again. Mm -hmm.